Hi everyone, welcome to my live creative time today. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. It's great to be here. I am back in the craft room after a few days away and um, we had a wonderful time, but it's great to be back, great to get back into routine. And um, here we are for another live creative time. I have a beautiful card for you today, a beautiful vintage card. So I'm so excited to bring that one to you today. So as everybody is um, finding the notification that I've gone live, I'll just bring this up on my other devices. So bear with me while I just do that and get that ready. And then I can see all of your comments. All right, that one is good. And in case you're wondering why I... I use two different devices or additional devices. It's because oh. there we go. Because sometimes I can't see your comments um, on one device or the other. Sometimes they freeze and they do all sorts of crazy things. So I like to have two extra devices running so that I can make sure I don't miss any of your comments. Although sometimes if they fly through really quickly, I still can miss them. <laughs> so, so if ever I miss a comment, feel free to ask again. Hey, Kayla, how are you? Um, oh, yes, thank you. My back is feeling pretty good, actually, at the moment. Um, still, there's always pain, but it's manageable. Uh, but we just had a few days away, so um, that was amazing. And it behaved itself quite well, apart from one night. One night I just had to take some pain meds and then it was good again the next day. So, um, yeah, but it's doing well. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, Martha, how are you? Great to see you today. And Rose is here too. Hey, Rose, how are you going? Great to have you with us. So, yeah, so as I was saying, I have got a beautiful vintage card for you today. Um, now, I've got... Um, a class on offer so this is a re-offering of a class that I ha held previously um, all the products are still current um, but I'm just offering the PDF only version this time so it's the vintage well the vintage pretty birds class so in this class there are five beautiful vintage projects all very detailed all vintage um, vintage style using the pretty birds suite or the pretty birds um not sweet the pretty birds bundle um really really beautiful so if you love vintage cards or perhaps you already have this stamp set or if you'd like to get this stamp set you can add it on to the class as well uh, but this one is on offer right now registrations close next tuesday the 20 What's the date? Hang on, I've got it here on the details. Um, Tuesday the 28th of March, the registrations will close. So, um, yeah, so it's just PDF only. Um, I won't be sending out the kits for this one because this is a previous class that I offered and I'm just re-offering it um, again as PDF version. So if you'd like to get that, it's only um, $22 and um, you can get that right now. So I will send, and thank you to those of you who have already registered. I will be in contact shortly um, with payment details, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, I just haven't had a chance since I got back from our trip, but I'll get onto that today. Um, so let me pop up the link in the comments for you. And also too, if you are watching back on replay or you're watching over on YouTube later, thank you so much for watching. Uh, but you will find the detail in my um, links. I'll put up my link tree link and all of my links for everything are there, including this one. So um, you'll be able to find it there. So let me just pop that in the comments. There we go. Okay, so that's that's going to pop up in your in the comments there, and you can click on that link and check out the class. It's uh, the projects are absolutely beautiful, and as I said, if you don't already have the um, the bundle or the designer series paper that's in the class as well, because we're using the Abigail Rose designer series paper, then you can add those um, items into your class order as well if you would like to. So feel free to check that out. Um, yeah, so that's just a little sneak peek. I'll give you another little sneak peek of the projects that are in the class. They're really gorgeous. 
So today, we're going to be making a similar project using the same products, but it's not one of the cards from the class. It's a different one, um, but it's following the same theme. So if you purchase the um, PDF tutorial, then this will be an additional project that you can create as well. So, um, hey, Vicky, all the way from Arizona. Great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, let me just say as well that my Vintage Pretty Bird um, class PDF tutorial is available for purchase from anywhere around the world. So um, yes, because it's a PDF, I can send that anywhere around the world. Um, if you are purchasing it from outside of Australia, you just won't be able to add on the additional product because I can't sell product overseas. I can only sell product within Australia, but I can sell PDF tutorials anywhere, anywhere around the world. Now, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like to get your hands on these beautiful catalogs, so we've got our big annual catalog currently running and we've got our mini catalog, then please let me know. I'd love to get those catalogs out to you. Now, these two catalogs are actually going to be retiring very soon, the end of April. So let me just let you all know that because they're going to be finishing at the end of April and also too... Oh, pardon me. And also too, because they uh, we're also having a color refresh, or Stampin' Up! is having a color refresh. It's all right, I'm okay. I just need a drink of water. <laughs> um, all of our colors are going to change. Well, not all of them, but some of them are going to change. So if there's, let me have a sip. So if there are colors that you love in inks, paper, um, coloring tools, cardstock, all of that sort of thing, um, please be sure to get them now. Oh, and especially your re-inkers for your ink pads. If you've got ink pads that you love and you don't have the re-inkers, make sure you get the re-inkers now because um, they are going to start to sell out really soon. In fact, we've got one, um, there's one already, I was just checking this morning, there's one already that is on, is it on low inventory or it's unorderable at the moment? It's on low inventory. Um, yeah, so, and I think, was there another one? Let me just check. There were a few items that were on low inventory. Yeah. So if there are, if there's products that you love or that you've had on your wish list, make sure you get them now, um, because they might be gone for good very soon. Um, yeah. And especially all your inks. That's really, really important because, um, yeah, we don't know yet which ones are going to be going, which ones are staying, um, which ones are coming back, and we'll probably be getting some new ones as well. Right, I'm just moving my extra chair over so I can put my catalogs there because I forgot to grab that um, before. I need that one. So, yeah, so be sure to do that. Good morning, Janelle. How are you? Lovely to have you here with us. All right. Well, today, as I said, we're going to be playing with um, the Pretty Birds bundle. So we've got the beautiful, beautiful stamp set here. And there's a coordinating die set as well, which has additional dies in it also. Um, so it cuts out the all the birds, all the stamped images. And then we've got additional items as well, this beautiful bird cage. So we're going to be creating a vintage card with that this morning. So um, I hope you enjoy this. Um... And so I think we will jump in and get started. So I have just come back, as I said, I've just come back from um, four days up in Queensland on the Gold Coast with our daughter. We spent four beautiful days up there with our daughter um, and swam with dolphins and met polar bears up close. And um, what else did we do? Fed stingrays. My husband um, snorkeled with the stingrays and the reef shark and the turtle. Um, we did all sorts of amazing things. Went on the glass bottom boat on the um, the shark in the shark tank. That was amazing. Um, did all sorts of amazing things. Saw behind the scenes and yeah, it was really really interesting. It was really fantastic. And we've been there before to Sea World, but not since my daughter has worked there. And so um, we got to see it from a very different perspective this time. So it was really really interesting, and we had a great day. Um, yeah, so. Um, back into the swing of things today. Today's really my first full day back working into routine 
And um, yes, so if, I, if I'm a little bit all over the place today, that is why. Because <laughs> it's, it's my first day back in the craft room. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to tip the camera down now so that we can get started and start creating. Um, feel free to chat with me as I'm creating or if you're watching back on the replay, feel free to um, leave some comments. Um, if you like what you see, leave some, some likes, some thumbs up or some hearts. That would be awesome. Um, oh, you saw the pictures I posted, Vicky? Looked like you had, looks like we had fun. Yes, we did. We had an amazing time. And that dolphin show, oh my goodness, every time we watch that dolphin show, um, just brings out the emotion. Like, they're, oh, they're just amazing creatures, those dolphins. They are just so smart and clever and beautiful and um yeah and in the morning the first thing we did in the morning was um have a swim with the dolphin and have a play with the dolphin pat the dolphin uh, we swam out into the deep water it was beautiful yeah and his name was cliffy and he was blind in one eye because he'd been injured um, he was a rescue dolphin um, because he had been tangled in fishing line. So he's got a lot of injuries on his body and he's lost vision in one eye. Um, but he was so beautiful and so gentle. And um, yeah, they tailored the, the program um, to my needs because of my back. And so they made sure that everything was okay for me. And they kept checking that, you know, I was coping okay. And they helped me down into the water and they were just so beautiful they were just yeah they everyone really looked after me so it was really lovely all right I'm going to cover up the camera now otherwise I'll keep talking about dolphins all day <laughs> um, but I'll cover up the camera and we'll flip down onto the desktop so bear with me and I'll just get it ready for you here we go okay Get it all set up for you tighten everything up so we don't lose our camera halfway through there we go and I'll just adjust the lights while the camera is catching up oh I need to move my keyboard my keyboard too don't I there we go so we've got some lights on the subject I'll just move this out of the way There we go. All right, so let me show you. Oh, the camera is so wonky. Hang on one sec. Let me just straighten that up for you because otherwise that'll be a distraction. There, that's better. Great, okay. So any of the products that you see today are currently available in my online store. So be sure to um, go and check those out. So you can find my online store via my blog if you go to mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com and then click on the shop button that is up the top or you can also find my um, my online store through my website as well which is mandywitherby.stampinup.net. Um, you'll find uh, lots more creative inspiration and things like that. Well actually there's different things on, on both. So feel free to check both of them out <laughs> because you'll find different things there. Um, I do post on my blog um, twice a week at the moment. So there's lots of creative inspiration there. I just need to adjust my iPad. There we go. There's lots of creative inspiration there. So feel free to go there. Um, and if you are shopping with me, make sure you use my March 2023 host code, which is this one here. And all orders over $75 will receive a thank you gift from me for shopping with me. Hey, Roz, how are you going? Great to see you. All right, so the products we're using today are from the annual catalog. And on page 103, we've got the Pretty Birds bundle. And this is the one that we're going to be using. So you've got all of these beautiful um, budgies. Well, I... They look like budgies to me, but I know there are parrots that aren't budgies that are bigger than a budgie, um, that look very similar, but they're larger. So it can be whatever you want it to be. But for me, they're budgies today. Um, and they, I just really love them. They're so beautiful. Now it has coordinating dies, which I showed at the beginning. If you buy the stamp sets and the dies together, and believe me, you'll want the dies as well, um, you'll save yourself 10% if you purchase them as a bundle. And there's one code down here that you can use um, 
when you purchase the bundle, okay? And that will give you the 10% discount. All right, we're also using the uh, Abigail Rose Designer Series Paper. Now these you can all find in the online store as well. So um, as I said, they're here in the catalog if you have a catalog and if you don't, then um, you can find them in the online store. And on page 131 is the Abigail Rose paper. This is so beautiful. It's hard to see um, well on camera, like when I'm showing you on in the catalog and you can't really see all of the paper, you know, as clearly there, but it is really beautiful in real life. In fact, I've got the paper here. So let me show you, well, what's left of it anyway. This has been, um, we've, we've really loved this paper and so we've used it quite a bit. So we've got all these chopped up bits, but it's really, really pretty paper. So I'll show you both sides. Look at this one, that script in the background, just absolutely gorgeous paper. Um, there's some like book note paper, some flowers on the back there. It's got all of these chopped up pieces, all these different beautiful floral designs. I think I've got a full piece of that one. Look at all my little, I keep all these little pieces because they come in so handy for different projects. So don't throw away all of your scraps. Keep them because they can come in handy for your um, for other projects. I've got this one here. And on the back, we've got that design. Oh, this is a bigger piece of the one I showed you before. So they do come in um, a pack of 12 by 12 inches. And, oh, this one's upside down. So this is like old um, uh, ledger paper. I really love this one. And this one, I think I showed you that one already with that beautiful pattern. Yeah, so they come in 12 by 12. This is a, the only one I've got left in a full sheet. So I haven't used as much of this one. Um, but yeah, I, as you can see, I've chopped all mine up. So we're going to be using some of that today as well. And in my Vintage Pretty Birds class, which I was talking about earlier, um, this is the paper that we were using as well. Okay. All right, so let me show you um, the products again. So here is the stamp set. Here are the dies. I'll take them out of the packet because the packets tend to um, reflect the, the lights. So this is the birdhouse dies. And so we've got the dies in here that cut out each of um, the birds. So the, the group of five birds there and then each of these individual birds and the bird cage, so it dies for those. Then you've got an additional um, large cage, which we're going to be using today. Some um, hangers for the cage, like some um, decorative hang hangers. Um, you've got these other little decorative pieces. We've got some feathers, a bow, and a swing. That looks like a looks like a horse stirrup, but it's actually well. I guess you could use it for that if you're making a, a different a different type of card. Um, but it's actually a, a swing for the birds to sit on. And there's even a little feeder there. Um, more feathers, another little extra bow. Uh, sorry, bird, and a little bell. And all of these little feathers, there's there's different shaped ones. There's a whole heap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven different, uh, seven feathers there. Some of them are duplicates. Um, but yeah, all different styles. So it's really, really good. And even this little filigree swirly piece, little decorative piece, that's really beautiful too. So I love that. Um, now, this one doesn't have a sentiment. The Pretty Bird stamp set, as you can see, doesn't have any sentiments with it. So we are also going to be using a sentiment from the Cottage Rose. And this one coordinates with the um, designer series paper. So we're going to be using that one. Alrighty, so let's get on with our project today. I'll pop these over to the side. And I'll show you what we're going to be creating. Now, as I said, this project is not one that is from the class. This is an additional project, um, but here it is here. Really, really pretty. 
using um, petal pink, um, creating those beautiful little budgies. And we've got that cage die cut there. We've got lots of um, just distressing going on. We've got um, scissor distressing and ink distressing as well to create this beautiful vintage card. So I hope you enjoy this one today. We've just got three colors of ink that we are using and we need a dauber as well. Just one dauber for the Sahara sand. And then we've got, whoops, oh, my card is falling over. Hang on, let me just move that over that side. So we've got Sahara sand, we've got soft suede, and we have petal pink, but my label on my petal pink has um, faded, so you actually can't read it, but it is, my, it is petal pink. Okay, so they're just the three colors we're gonna be using today. Super easy. Alrighty, now I, um, oh, we're also gonna be using some um, linen trim and some pearl basic jewels as well for embellishing. Okay, so they're the bits and pieces that we're gonna be using. Um, and all of the measurements will be over on my blog. I might quickly run through them. Um, but yeah, if you miss them, don't worry. I'm, I'm not going to go back over them because it, all the details will be over on my blog um, tomorrow. So a couple of the pieces I've already prepared just to cut down on time today because otherwise we'll be here for too long. Um, but these are all the pieces that we have. So we've got a base of soft suede and this one is 21 by 14.85, scored and folded in half at 10.5, as we always do. We've got our beautiful designer series paper. Um, this is the white floral. Well, it's, it's kind of vanilla more than white, really. Uh, this one is 10.2 by 14.55. We've got our striped piece, which I've already distressed um, ahead of time. We're going to do some distressing on the other pieces, but I did just a couple um, ahead of time. This is the, uh, the striped DSP. It's 8 centimetres by 12. We've got the brown floral. This one is uh, 9.5 by 9.5. We're going to do a bit of tearing and a bit of distressing on that one. We've got our petal pink piece, which is 8.8 .8 centimeters by five. And we've got a couple of white pieces here. We've got, um, we've got one that is 8.5 by 7.4.7, uh, which is this one here. And then this is a smaller piece for um, stamping our birds. Yes, for stamping up. Uh, no, sorry, this one is for, wait, which one is this one? Oh, this one's that one. This one's for stamping our sentiment on and then die cutting that one. Um, this one is actually for the birds. Sorry, I, I've even written birds on there. Um, so this one is, I don't know what this one is. What, what is this one? Oh, sorry, this one is the 8.8 .8 by 5. No. Yes, this is the 8.8 .8 by 5, and this one was an additional piece for the birds. This one's 10.5 by 8. I don't think I wrote that one down, did I? I think I might have missed that one. That's okay. And then I've cut two of the little bows. I've die cut those ahead of time out of um, some scrap basic white. And then I've done the cage out of some um, uh, soft suede, and I've done that ahead of time as well. So you can just use a scrap if you have a scrap of soft suede that um, fits that die. So those bits are already done ahead of time. All right, so if you missed any of those measurements, never fear because they'll be over on my blog tomorrow for you. Okay, so we're going to start off with our stamping. So we'll leave out these two white pieces. Now I'm going to be using some grid paper today. This one's got a little bit of ink just as I was preparing um, some of those pieces for you earlier. But we're gonna start off with the stamping first and we'll do the sentiment first and then we'll do the birds. I'll show you how to create the birds. So I've got the stamps here already all mounted up on the blocks. So these are a photopolymer stamp set. So they are clear which is great because it means that you can line them up because this is actually a two-step stamp set. Whoops. Oh, sorry, that was noisy. 
um, this is a two-step stamp set because we have the outline of the bird with all the detail and then you've got the solid color fill areas to color them um, with your stamp, which is really easy rather than hand coloring them. Oh, you can see all my extra little pieces in there. There's the rest of them in there. So you can see they're nice and clear. You've got the printed images on the back cover so that you can just adhere your stamp straight into your cover. Okay, so I'll move all of these over to the side. Out of the way. There we go. Um, and the Cottage Rose stamp set, it's actually a cling stamp set. So it's the red rubber. Um, oh, that one's stuck in there. I don't know why that one's in there. Must be for a reason. Can't remember why. Um, so yeah, so this one is a red rubber cling stamp and it's got the, I've applied the stickers so that I can see where to line those ones up. But that's got some really beautiful um, images in there and beautiful sentiments as well. Very detailed floral images, really, really pretty. But we're just using the sentiment out of that one today. All right, so we are going to be starting with our sentiment, which is, um, it's going to be fab. That's the one we're using today. And we are going to be stamping that in um, soft suede. So we'll get our soft suede ready. And we're going to be stamping our bird images in soft suede as well. Actually move that one over that side and I'll put my ink pad on this side. So, all right, so we're going to start by stamping our sentiment. And we're going to be stamping that over to the left side, just in a little bit from the edge. So we'll just line that up. Just stamp that there like that. Okay, so we'll set that aside, let that dry. And we'll give this one a clean and then we'll stamp our birds while we've got that ink pad out. Using my Simply Chamois. This is one I've had for quite a while. It's quite... Um, stained and yucky but what I do is I you can either soak them and um, often if they start to get a bit smelly I soak them in a container of um, dishwater and then soak them overnight and then rinse them all out and they're good to go um, with this one I actually pop this one in the washing machine but if you pop it in the washing machine make sure that you rinse it um... oh, okay yep yeah, will do Amber um, yeah, um, yeah, if you pop it in the washing machine, it does take a little bit of the color out with the washing detergent. Um, so this one has faded a little bit because it's been through the washing machine a couple of times. Still works perfectly well. Um, just if you are putting it through the machine, make sure you don't put it through with any fabric softener, um, just with your washing detergent and just make sure that it rinses really clean and isn't left sudsy or anything. All right. So, um, I've already die cut my cage and I'm just going to double check that the cage will fit next to the sentiment. Ooh, it's a close fit. I've actually stamped that too far over. I need to stamp that a little bit closer to the edge. So see how that, I need a little bit more edge here. So what I'll do is I'll just flip that over and I'll stamp this again on the other side. Lucky I checked that. So let's go a little bit closer this time to the edge. There we go. And now let's check to see that our cage will fit. That'll be better. Yeah. So we need to make sure that our cage can fit beside the sentiment over that layer. Okay, because it's quite wide there. So that looks better. All right, good. It's good that um, cardstock has two sides, isn't it? <laughs> Lucky, because if we make a boo-boo on one side, we can just flip it over. So there you go. All right, so now let's set that one aside. And we've got our cage. All right, and we're going to stamp our birds. So this one's clean. We'll put that aside. All right, so we're going to use the... Um, so I've got two different birds here. I've got this one here and this one here. Okay, so those two are the ones that we're using. 
and then we'll use their coordinating um, color infill pieces. All right, which I'll show you when we get to. All righty, so let's stamp. We're gonna stamp them the outline in soft suede as well. So we'll stamp one over here. Beautiful. And then we'll stamp the other one over this side here. Gorgeous. Look how cute they are. Aren't they beautiful? Just give those a clean straight away, especially because this is dark ink. It's got a lot of pigment in it. And um, we don't want that to leave too much staining on our stamps if you do get a little bit of staining on your photopolymer stamps don't be worried don't be too worried they still work perfectly well so long as you give them a clean and remove that surface ink um, then you'll be all good to go all right so we'll close this up that's it for the outline oh the other thing i do have in my tub which i forgot to clean to color the beak and the feet was the dark crumb cake stamp and blend we will use that as well in a minute nearly forgot about that bit okay and we're going to take our petal pink ink and we're going to um, stamp the body pieces the color fill pieces now some of them will be obvious because they'll be in the same shape as the bird so we've got that piece there that colors the um, the wings of this bird. And then we've got, now let me work out, this is the tummy piece. So this, this stamp here will do the tummy and the under part of the tail. And then for the other bird, we've got this piece, which will do that one's wings. And then we've got a separate piece which will do the head and the tummy. Okay, so you kind of will work it out when you've got the um, when you've got the stamps. You can kind of work out which one goes with which. And if you look at the images of the birds, um, the coordinating pieces will be sort of with them. So this one goes with this one. You can see that's the same um, shape as that bird. These two pieces go with this one, and these two pieces go with this one. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to um, do some stamping off. So I'm going to, I'll just move that over. And we're going to do, first of all, we're going to do the full, um, full strength for the wings. And then we're going to do second generation with some stamping off for the tummies and the heads. So we'll do this one first. So we'll ink that up, make sure we've got a good covering of ink. I'm just going to line that up with the bird and stamp that down. There we go. Now it's going to look quite dark when you first stamp it, but as um, the colour absorbs into the cardstock, it will um, dull down a little bit. Okay, and we'll just ink that off. And then we've got the head part of this bird. So we're going to stamp off this time. So we'll ink up our stamp. We're going to quickly stamp off on the paper. And then we're going to line that up with, and just looking where the eye and the beak are and the belly outline. There we go. So there we've got the, um, the wings in the darker color and the head and the belly in the lighter color. Okay, so we'll do the same with the other bird. We're going to do the wings full strength, so what we call first generation. And we'll line that up as best as we can. If it's not lined up perfectly, don't be too worried. That's beautiful. Good. And then the belly is going to be second generation, so we'll ink that up. Quickly stamp off on our paper. We don't want to leave it sitting on our paper too long because the more ink will come off the stamp and absorb into the paper. Let's try and line this up with the tail. There we go. So see how we've got the, the two-tone birds using the exactly the same colour, but just doing that stamping off. 
Okay. All right, so we'll give those a clean. Clean our stamps. So the petal pink, although it's called pink, petal pink, it's more of a sort of um, soft apricot kind of colour. Well, it's actually a heavy apricot colour on, on the wings. <laughs> it's a softer apricot colour on the bellies. All right, so we're going to use our dark crumb cake to colour the sear, the beak and the feet. The sear of the bird is the part that sits over the top of the beak. And usually in bird, in budgies at least, um, the sear is brown for girls and blue for boys. And the reason I know this is because I used to breed budgies many years ago. Had them for many years, but um, when I got married, uh, it was just too hard. <laughs> so I didn't have them anymore after that. But when I was all through my teenage years, I had, um, I had budgies and I used to breed them. There we go. So now they are beautifully colored. All right, so we can die cut those now because that's the only die cutting that we're going to be doing on camera today because the other parts I already did ahead of time. Just move that out of the way. And we'll die cut our little birdies. So bring in the um, mini stamp and cut and emboss machine and I'll use my number one base plate, number two clear plate, and then we'll have our birds. So we'll get our coordinating dies. Actually, I might put the dies on before I put them on the plate so I can line them up. So with the, um, the stamp and cut and emboss machine, with the mini, the plate, all the plates that you need for both cutting and embossing will come with the machine. So you don't need to um, purchase any additional plates. They will get all scratched up over time. I've been using these ones for a really long time and they're starting to scratch up, or they are scratched up. They're starting to warp a little bit. So you can buy replacement plates when they get um, really bad and then you can just change them over. So um, yeah, so that's really good. I use mine a lot. So they get um, quite a, a good amount of use. Okay, so I'm just going to use a little bit of washi tape just to hold these dies in place around these little birdies. So we'll line that up nicely. Whoops, it's a bit slippery. There we go. So I'll pop one on that side and one on that side. And when I use, when I put my dies down, I try not to let the washi tape get on the stamped image itself, just on the dies as much as possible. Just because once the washi tape goes through the machine, it kind of pushes it down really tightly. And um, if you're not careful, it can actually tear your cardstock, depending on how sticky your washi tape is. Um, some people use the post-it repositionable tape, or you can just use post-it notes as well. Um, I actually haven't been able to find the post-it tape yet. I believe you can get it online through Amazon, but... Um, I don't use Amazon, so um, yeah, and I haven't found it in our local stationery store yet, so I have to keep looking for it. Hopefully one day they'll have it. All right, so then we put our clear plate over the top, and we'll just take those through the machine. Do the birdies need names? Ah, oh, yes, I think they do. Can everybody help me name the birdies? do you think they look like what what sorts of names do you think we could give these little budgies they're quite cute aren't they they're a, a colored well that they're actually a little bit different their markings are a little bit different on them and they're um this one's got a darker colored head this one's got a lighter colored head has anyone got any good name suggestions for me for the for our birds for our little birdies here I used to have all of my budgies had names. I should have really marked out where I had these on my die sheet too because, oh no, there we go. I fit them quite well. Yay. Wasn't sure that I was going to fit them on there yet. Uh, on there. What did I say yet for? 
Um, all right, there we go. So has anyone got any good name suggestions for these little birds? Ooh, I can think of a couple. I can think of a couple. One of them perhaps could be called peaches. What do you think? Because they're kind of like a peachy color. Oh, Amber just said that too, peachy. <laughs> I said peaches, she said peachy. What about the other one? Okay, this, this one can be peachy. What about this one? This one needs a name too. Has anyone got any good name suggestions for me? Put them in the comments. Let me know what, what, you, uh, what you think it should be called. Um, has anybody else had budgies or do you have budgies? Let me know that in the comments too. I would really love to have another budgie. In fact, uh, I, I know that I just said I didn't have budgies once I got married, but um, one of my daughters did have um, a budgie at one stage, but sadly it passed away. Oh, actually, I think maybe twice we had budgies. I think twice we had budgies, once here at this house and once at our old house. But um, yeah, sadly, they, they both passed away. One of them was a, um, uh, a stray that our neighbours picked up. And then I think we got another one after that. Yeah, I can't remember now. One of, them, one of them's name was Charlie. But I don't think Charlie, was it Charlie that came here to our house, to this house, Amber? Or was that a different budgie? I can't remember now. So long ago. Anyway, so let me show you this birdcage die. This is a, such a beautiful um, die cut piece. And it's this one here, this big cage here. It's quite delicate. Um, the bottom is nice and um, solid, so easy to adhere. The, um, the wire part is quite delicate. So I'll show you how to adhere that the easiest way or the, the easiest way that I've found anyway. Um, but it's really, really beautiful. And the other one we've die cut already is this bow. So I've cut two of those bows. Jasper. Yes, Jasper was um, the other one that we had. Jasper. So we could have, so these ones could be Peachy and Jasper, do you think? All right, so we're going to do a little bit of distressing now um, and a little bit of inking. So I need my. Um, do, 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 do. What do I need? My Sahara sand. So we're going to do all the distressing with Sahara sand ink. Um, but we'll do our scissor distressing first and then we'll go around everything with our ink. So our little birdies, I'll just leave them sitting over there. If you've got any other great name suggestions, put them in the comments. And these pieces are done. And we're going to do all of these ones. And these ones I need to ink distress. All right. And that's our base. Okay, so has anybody done scissor distressing before? Now, back in the day, we used to have tools to do this. And at one stage, many, many years ago, Stampin' Up! actually had a set of distressing tools. I hope that they bring them back one day because they were fantastic and they made it super easy. Now, if you're using your, your paper snips or your scissors to scissor distress, be very careful not to cut yourself with the blades, okay? Especially with, I know that these um, paper snip scissors are very, very sharp. Unless you're using a, an old blunt pair, but these are my newest ones. And so these ones are still very, very sharp. So be careful when you're doing this. So we'll do our um, largest piece first, our largest layer. You will want some scrap paper under you or a container of some sort to catch the um, pieces of cardstock. Because you are going to get little um, bits of cardstock going everywhere or paper, I should say, and you're going to open your scissors like that and you're going to run the blade along the edge of your paper to roughen it up, okay, and that's called scissor distressing. So as you do it, you need to, especially using paper, because this is designer series paper, you need to support the paper so that you don't tear it. If you get little tears, that's okay, but you don't want any huge, great big tears. So I've got my hands behind there, being careful to keep the blade away from my hands. And we're just going to run the blade of our scissors down our paper to roughen up those edges. Sounds horrible. So if, if you um, don't like the sound of this, just turn your sound down for a bit. <laughs> 
Oh, Roz says, yes, she has. She finds it easier to use slightly blunt scissors. Well, that's a great tip. Thanks for that, Roz. Yes, if you use very, very sharp scissors, they can tend to cut into the paper um, quite a bit. I don't mind if I get little, little um, cuts here and there because it adds to the distressed look. All right, so once you've done one side, you will get all those little little pieces of um, paper or if you're doing it with cardstock. So make sure you've got a little catcher. And we're just going to do that along each edge. And this gives us more of a, a distressed vintage sort of look. Now vintage is my favourite um, style and distressing is my favourite technique. I do ink distressing on a lot of my cards, or most of them actually. You'll find some ink distressing, even if it's just on the sentiment label. But I like all the different types of distressing techniques. I actually have a... Um, see, look, I've got a little cut there, but that's okay. What we're going to do, I'll show you what we'll do with that in a minute. Um, on my blog at mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com. There are some technique tutorials there that are available for purchase, and there is one on different distressing techniques. And that is from my um, technique club that I used to run. I don't run the technique club anymore, but I have all of those tutorials available for purchase over on my blog. So you can go there, look under, um, look under tutorials, in the headings at the top and click on that button and that'll take you to my um, tutorial page. All right, there we go. That one looks pretty good. All right, so with the... Oh, that just reminded me. I didn't put my, my devices on Do Not Disturb. I'll just quickly do that now. There we go. Great. All right, so with that little piece that down here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fiddle that sort of like this just sort of manipulate that cardstock and just kind of roll that inwards a little bit so it's not looking like a sharp cut it's looking like it was meant to be and it was distressed all right then what I like to do is I like to run my fingers along the edges so that any of those excess little pieces of paper that might just be sitting there on the edge will come off okay all right and then with this piece, so this piece here was the um, 9.5 by 9.5. With this one, oh, actually, before I jump onto this one, this one here, the striped piece, I did exactly the same thing. But I, I did this one ahead of time just so I wasn't, you weren't sitting here watching me distress too many pieces. But I did exactly the same technique with this one. And then I did the ink around the edges, which we'll get to with this one too. All right. Um, with this piece, what we're going to do is we're going to um, tear along the top and the bottom edge, and then we're just going to distress the edges. All right, so we're going to do some tearing technique this time. So when you're tearing, again, support your paper or your cardstock behind where you're tearing and just tear. We might even like to go this way. Just tear in little bits at a time. Don't do a great big tear because what will happen is you just want you just want that little fine white edge but if you do one great big long tear that big that little white edge there will become very very wide and ugly so just do little tears i repositioned my hand so i'm supporting my cardstock okay then we're going to turn that around the other side do the same we're just tearing off a very little piece. Okay, so we sort of want the, the width still. So we're just tearing off a little bit. There we go, and you get that white edge. We're gonna distress those edges in a little bit um, with some ink, and then we're gonna take our paper snips and those two straight edges on the left and the right, we're gonna do our scissor distressing on those two edges. Whoop. Turn that around to the other side. Let's 
So for those of you that might have jumped on a little bit later, um, just letting you know that I do have a class tutorial that is available for purchase at the moment. Um, registrations will be closing next Tuesday. It is the Vintage Pretty Birds um, class. This is not one of the cards from the class. This is an additional project, but um, it is available for purchase. And um, there are five projects in the class. Um, you, can, you can add on the, um, the paper and the stamps and dies if you want to, or you can just purchase the tutorial on its own. The link is in the comments here, and I'll also be putting the link in the description of this video as well. So um, check that one out. You can click on the link, have a look at the registration form and all of the details. And if you'd like to register, you can fill in the, the registration form. All right, so we've got all of these little bits of paper. So I'm just going to tip them off into my paper scrap bin and clean up the desk of all the other little bits that went off the page. Probably needed a bigger piece of paper underneath me. Clean them all off. Okay. And now we're going to do some, some ink distressing. All right, who loves their sponge daubers? Does anybody else love their sponge daubers? These are one of my favorite coloring tools. I use these a lot. All right, so what we're going to do is we're gonna take some of our, um, this is the Sahara Sand ink. We're gonna ink up our sponge dauber and we're going to now go around all of the edges of those pieces that we just distressed. Okay, so as we do that, that helps to highlight those distressed edges and it just gives an aged effect. Just keep inking, inking up your dauber as you need. And we're just daubering just right along that edge, not going in, um, not going in, you know, too far. All right. Do we get a name for the other little birdie? We've got peaches. Is it peaches or peachy? Peachy. We needed an extra name for the other little budgie. Anyone got any good budgie names? All right, we're going to do the same with this one, going around all four sides. I'm guessing that nobody that's with us today has budgies because nobody has said that they do. I would love to get another budgie again, but they are a lot of work. Have to keep their cage clean and keep their feed and their water up. And then if you go away, you have to have somebody look after them. Although we have a puppy who needs someone looking after her too when we go away. So yeah, it's just added work, isn't it? <laughs> Rosie, oh, that's a cute name for a budgie. Yeah, Rosie, Rosie and Peachy. That's cute. Rosie and Peachy, I like that. What does everyone think? Rosie and Peachy? Cute names. All right, so there's those two pieces. Now, we've got the two little bows that I had um, die cut previously, and they've got some little detail. I'll hold them up to the camera a little bit closer. They've got some detail embossed in them. Can you see that? Really, really cute. So we're going to put a little bit of ink around the edges of those as well. To distress those two because we don't want stark white bows when everything else on the card is distressed that would look a bit weird so we need to distress these as well okay so there's one and we'll do this one too There we go. All right. Now, um, with the, I forgot about this one, the piece that we stamped the sentiment on, we need to distress the edges of that one as well. So that's the, that's the side we're using. Um, 
Just a tip, if you are scissor distressing, close your ink pads before you do it, just in case any of the fibers fly away. You don't want those fibers of cardstock or paper going into your ink pad. Um, yeah, because you don't want to pick them up on your stamps. So we're just going to scissor distress this white piece of cardstock. The cardstock is a bit hardier, so you might need to go a bit heavier with your, your scissor distressing on your cardstock because it's much thicker than the paper. So you might need to you know, just press a little bit harder as you're doing it. And I'm holding my scissors like that, so I'm not holding near the blades. I'm holding where they open to keep them open. I find that the easiest way to hold them. This is not a technique that you would want to do with children. It's a little bit dangerous with those blades. So this is, a, this is an adult crafting technique, I think. Unless you had proper distressing tools, which I still have a, a really old one that I had from many years ago. Um, but I, I don't tend to use it now. I tend to just use the, the scissors. Let's get that edge there. Okay. Close those up, run your fingers along the edges just to remove any of those extra bits that are just sitting there. Okay. Clean off all of those little extra fibers. Good, oh, didn't get them all off. There we go. And then we'll do some ink distressing on this one as well. Who else likes distressing techniques? Let me know in the comments. And actually, let me know in the comments. Um, oh, hi, Athena, how are you going? Oh, you're working. <laughs> oh, good on you. It's great to see you. How are you going? How's your new craft room? Um, yeah, what, what's your... What are, let me know, everybody, what your favourite um, techniques are with your paper crafting. What's your favourite technique? I like um, ink distressing. Oh, now the other thing we need to do too is while we have our ink, so that's all our distressed pieces, and these two pieces, um, oh, Rose does. Rose loves distressing. Fantastic. It's so, I find it so therapeutic as well. I really love it. Um, these two I did beforehand. This one I didn't distress. I left this one just as a solid piece. So I didn't scissor distress this. I just ink distressed it. Um, so that one is just, yeah, with the ink. But this one I did the scissor distressing and the inking. Okay, so we're building up all of our layers. Now, with your um, cage, uh, it tends to blend a little bit into this um, brown paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of ink very carefully over this one just to change that color up a little bit and just make it a bit deeper. So this has been cut in soft suede and we're adding Sahara sand ink just over all of the pieces just to make it a little bit deeper. So just take it easy over those fine pieces. So I'm just holding it on, uh, yeah, just holding it on the um, the base there to do the base, so that I don't tear those. Um, I don't want to tear the finer pieces there. So I'll just give it a little bit more depth of colour. Just changes that cardstock up a little bit. And then, if you want to, you can go a bit heavier around the edges as well, and that will show up. Um, Probably doesn't show up as well on camera, but in person, like you can see the difference. There we go. There. Yeah. Okay, 
so that's um you could actually use this as a mask to create if i do it let's turn this over if you wanted to create like a background piece that looked like a cage in the background you could actually go over this and go over the whole detail of that cage including around the outside if you were like wanting to create a background it's just another way of using it I mean I won't do it fully and properly but you kind of get the idea see how you get sort of the look of the cage in the background I mean I haven't done that properly but you kind of get the idea and you could have like that in the back in the background that would be cool not on this card maybe on a different card but yeah just a little tip for you all right so I think we've got all of our pieces now um oh got a little bit more excess cardstock there a little few little fibers all right so now we've got all of our pieces so we've got our base We've got our white floral, our vanilla floral piece, our striped piece, which is also distressed. And then we've got our brown piece, which is distressed, our two bows, which is distre are distressed. And these two pieces are going to layer on top of each other, like so. And then we've got our cage and our birds. And then we're going to have our embellishing. Now, we've got to remember to put our twine in as well. Um, so we'll build the layers up and we've got to add our twine after the first two layers. Okay, so let's put all of these ones to the side. And we're going to add these two layers to begin with. All right, so I'm going to use some um, stamp and seal. So I love using stamp and seal. It is a great adhesive. It's nice and quick and easy to use. If you like using um, tape runners and dry adhesives, this is a great one. So you just sometimes you just need to get the tape running. Um, this was a brand new one that I put in the other day. There we go. You just need to get the tape to the end of the roller. And then it's really easy. Just firm pressure, holding on the top and pressing down. It's very, very sticky. So make sure when you are adhering your piece that you have it lined up where you want it because it is quite sticky. And we also do have the um, Stamp and Seal Plus if you want a very, very strong adhesive, say for 3D items, um, boxes, things like that, there is this Stamp and Seal Plus. There we go. Okay, so next we're going to add the Striped Designer Series paper. I didn't get that. Oh. Did you try again? No, Siri, go away. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Siri just decides that she wants to contribute to the conversation. All right, so I might put these little torn bits at the top. And this is just going to be adhered in the center there. There we go. All right, now the next piece um is going to be the brown piece but we want to put some twine down first not twine sorry um linen thread so we're going to take two lengths of linen thread don't ask me the measurements of these because i just do this straight off the roll Let's put my extra bits away there what i'm going to do is i'm going to get some of this linen thread if you find when you when you get your linen thread if you find that it's very curly whirly from being on the roll what you can do is take your bone folder grab your bone folder and just put the twine in between your thumb and the bone folder and just run that along and that helps to take out those tight kinks so then you can manipulate it and it becomes a little bit straighter you still be it still will be a little bit kinky but not as um, kinked it was as what it was when it first came off the roll this one's got a little bit of a extra dark fiber there all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and wrap that around my hands a few times probably three yeah and then i'm going to snip that off and we'll do two of those okay so take it wrap it around your hand three times i'm kind of wrapping it around the widest part 
having my fingers spread just slightly. We can manipulate it and fiddle with it a bit. All right, this one, see how that's a little bit curly? I'm going to straighten this one out. That's just to um, get that to curl around. That's better. Look at that. I just took that extra kink out. I'll do that again. Wind that around about three times. All right, so we've got two little rounds there of twine. This one's a little bit kinked at the end. I didn't quite straighten out that end properly. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to separate these Uh, pieces separate these twine pieces and we're going to adhere one at the top here okay and one at the bottom so I'm just going to grab some glue dots so that I can so we're using the mini glue dots and I'll just grab my take your pick tool take the cap off and I'm going to use the pokey pokey tool as I like to call it and I'm just going to pick up a glue dot with my pokey pokey tool and I'm going to glue this down here okay I'm not going to glue it up here because I don't want the glue to be seen um, but I'm, I want this little nest of twine down here and I'm going to glue it down here so I'll pop a glue dot here and just stick that on to there okay and that should hold that piece and you can just separate these and have them, yeah, it depends on the look that you want, how you like to have your little nests of twine. Might add an extra glue dot there just to help hold that in place. And these glue dots are gonna be covered up by our next layer, okay? So you won't see those. And then we're gonna do the same down the bottom. So work out where that's going to sit. Separate those pieces of twine. I keep calling it twine. It's linen thread. <laughs> but just separate those so they look kind of, we want them to look kind of like a nest. Take some more glue dots. Put the glue dots up here at the top where they're going to be covered over. I'll take that piece down there too. Now we'll add a second glue dot just to make sure that stays in place. Pop a second one up here. There we go. Okay, so they'll kind of look like that. Then you can just test to see when you place this piece down, if you're happy with how they look. They won't look exactly the same and that's okay, but you don't want them looking too sort of uniformed either. You want them sort of, you know, a bit sort of messy. I think that's pretty good. Yep, and this one, we might just take that little tail down. I don't want that little tail sticking up up there so we'll just fold him back over to there like that okay great now this piece is going to be um, put onto some dimensionals so um, we want lots of dimensionals on here because it's just paper so it um, doesn't have that strength and we're going to be adding extra layers to the top of it so we need to make sure that we use lots and lots of um, Lots and lots of dimensionals. Let me just move this out of the way. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put a row along. Whoops. That's okay. A row along the middle to support the middle. And then we'll do another row up here. So if you haven't used Stampin' Dimensionals before, this is the um, Stampin' Up! at Heat... Um, double-sided adhesive foam. They're cut in little hexagons, which makes it super easy to um, get them off the sheet. And we also have them in minis as well. And some of the minis we're going to be using um, a little bit later. So these are the regular ones. And then we also have foam adhesive sheets as well. If you like larger pieces or you like to cut your own adhesive foam to the size that you want we have adhesive sheets uh, foam adhesive sheets as well all right so then we're going to pop this down here let me just position this how I want it yep all right so then we're just going to position this piece 
and center that top to bottom and side to side and adhere that down and that's going to help also to hold our twine as well. So I've got slightly bigger loops down here than up here but that's great. I'm really happy with that. Awesome. Okay. All right. So the next step is to take these two pieces here and we're going to adhere these together. So I'm going to take the um, sentiment label and attach that to the petal pink piece and I'm going to use my stamp and seal um, for that as well. Let's check I've got the right side. Yep. Okay, so we'll adhere that there. I love this stamp set. It's so beautiful with the birds. Okay, and then we're going to put this one up onto some dimensionals as well. So we'll bring our dimensionals back in again. And whoops, nearly lost it. There we go. Does anybody else have this stamp set, The Pretty Birds? Do you already have it? Let me know in the comments if you have this one. Or even if it's um, been on your wish list, let me know that as well. All right. And so then we're going to just pop our sentiment down here in the middle. Okay, so we've got that up on dimensionals. All right, the next part is going to be the cage. Yes, you have this one, Roz. Oh, awesome. It's so beautiful, isn't it? All right, so next we've got the cage. Now the cage, because it is so fine, we need to, um, we're going to be adding some glue, but we're also going to be adding some dimensionals. So we're going to be doing a bit of both. So what I'm going to use is, I'm going to use my silicon craft sheet for the glue and I've got a sponge there and I've got my liquid glue, my multi-purpose liquid glue. Uh, but we'll add the mini dimensionals first. Um, where's my minis? These ones here. All right, so I'm opening a new pack of minis today, which is super awesome. Um, so the mini stamp and dimensionals, they come in a pack of three sheets, okay? So I'm opening up a new sheet. So you get a total of 720 mini stamp and dimensionals which is heaps, they last for ages. All right, so we'll just take out one of the three sheets and just start off the corner. And the edge pieces, which are a little bit wider, you can use those um, for different projects too. So don't, don't throw out your edge pieces, use them. All right, so I'm gonna pop some minis across the bottom here. There we go, and I might pop some down here as well. Whoops, here and here. And then I'm gonna put one up here as well underneath, underneath the top part here where it's a little bit thicker. Whoops, see at the top there where it's a little bit thicker? I'm just gonna pop one there as well. Okay. So it's going to be up on dimensionals at the top and the bottom. Now the middle part, I want that to adhere here. Okay, so if you work out where this is going to line up, so it's going to sit kind of here like that. Come down a little bit. In fact, I might need a second layer. might need a second layer of dimensionals here at the bottom because that bit is going to sit off onto this layer and this layer here is already on dimensionals so we need a second layer here there we go and what about the top how's the top going to sit the top will need two layers as well so we'll add an extra layer on the top one too there we go okay so then we want to work out where 
this is going to sit okay so now I can see that these two crossbars here are going to be sitting on the white um, so I'm going to add some glue in this area here of the cage so to do that what I'm going to do is I've got my cage upside down I'm going to take my little sponge that I use for gluing this is just um, a quarter of a circle craft sponge and I'll use my multi-purpose liquid glue. So this is the sponging glue technique, if you haven't seen this before. So just put a little bit of glue on your silicon craft sheet. And the great thing is about the silicon craft sheet is the glue doesn't stick to it. It just rolls right back off. So you let it dry and then just roll it back off. Or you can take it to your kitchen sink and just wash it under the kitchen sink. So I'm just using my sponge to dab the glue in that middle section that's going to attach to the cardstock so that it will stay adhered and it won't pop up. Okay, just like that. All right, and then we'll remove the backings of all of the dimensionals. I probably should have done that first before I added the glue, but that's okay. We can still do it now. Okay, so that's all gluey now. Turn that over. All right, now we're going to line this up and pop that down on there, making sure you're not covering up your sentiment. Just line that up nice and straight and press that all down. There we go. So we've got those two layers of dimensionals. That will now help that to come in line with this so it'll be all nice and straight and the same down here and the glue will help hold that cage in that section there so just give that a press there okay so now that's all nicely stuck we've got lots of beautiful dimension happening there um okay great all right in fact you know what i just realized yes i should have had a second layer of dimensionals on this part too, because I forgot this one is also on dimensionals. So we've got one layer of dimensionals here, a second layer of dimensionals here. So this one here should have also been up on a second layer of dimensionals, but that's okay. It's all stuck now. So it's all good. All right. Nobody will ever know. There's so much going on on this card. Nobody will know. All right. For the bow, we're going to adhere um, one of the bows. Oh, let me make sure I turn it up the right way. We're going to just shape them a little bit with our fingers, especially the top one. Just bend them up a little bit. They bend up really easily because you've got that, um, you've got the embossing just there. So the the bow part, the loops of the bow, what would be the bow, the loops of the bow bend up really well. So we're going to adhere this one to the top. I'll just use my multi-purpose liquid glue for that because it's a little bit finer. Okay, so that one is going to go on here like that at the top of the cage. Let's give that a press down. And then with the second one, so that one can stay a little bit flatter. This one, we want the loops bent up a little bit more so that when they're layered on top of each other, it kind of looks a little bit like a double bow or like like the loops on a bow the ribbon loops so we'll just press that down okay and then we just bend these top one oops not the bottom ones just the top ones bottom ones stay flat actually and the top ones bend up there so we get like a little dimension on the bow you see that so it kind of gives you a loop more of the illusion of like a loop on your bow all right now for our little birds, little birds come next and the birds are just going to be glued on to the cage, our little peachy and rosy or peaches and rosy. Now with this one, oh, I might have stuck that a bit too tight now. With this one, if you can, oh no, I can look, you can hook its little claw over the, the wire in the cage. Okay, so we'll add a bit of glue to this one. And we'll hook its little claw over like that. Just pop that there like that. And then
and then this one now we just want to add glue to the tummy and the head not the tail because the tail is going to hang down a bit okay this one's going to go down here there we go uh, Robin says looking very cute thank you Robin it is a beautiful set this one I love the um, pretty bird set it's really beautiful okay so there we go there's our birdies all right so now it's just a matter of adding our bling so we'll take our pearls out so we've got our pearl basic jewels And I'll take your pick tool. All right, so we're going to add one of the large pearls up here in the middle of the bow. So I think that's just crying out for a pearl up there. And then we'll add some of the smaller ones. Oh, the smaller ones here in the cage. Oops. They're like that. And like that. Then we'll add another large one down here in the bottom corner. And then we're going to add three medium sized ones to the bottom of the cage. So one, two, and three. Let's get them lined up a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Always good to have an odd number of your embellishments. So there we go. There is our beautiful vintage pretty bird card. What do you think? Do you like that? Is that something that you might like to try? Let me know in the comments what you think. So as I said, this one is not one of the projects in my class. Um, but it is an additional project. So if you are purchasing my class or if you have previously purchased my, my class when I offered it the first time, then this is an additional one you can use your, um, your set with. So this is the class that is um, available, the Vintage Pretty Birds class. Thank you to those of you who did this class the first time round. Um, I am re-offering it again, this time as PDF only. Um, so the kits are not included, but if you have these products, you can create the projects or you can add on the, pro the products as well. So you just click on the registration form for all the details, fill in the registration form um, and you can choose if you just want the PDF or if you want the, the, pro um, the products as well. Registration is going to close next Tuesday, the 28th. So make sure you jump onto that. And thank you to those of you who have already registered. And I will be in contact um, uh, shortly about uh, payment for that. And then I can get that PDF to you. So there you go. So there is my beautiful card today. I hope you really enjoyed that. Lots of distress distressing, but a beautiful, beautiful vintage project using the, um, the Pretty Birds suite. So here's the stamp set again, the Pretty Birds. And we've got the coordinating dies. There they are there. So really beautiful, um, really beautiful bundle. So there you go. Does anybody have any questions? While you're thinking about your questions, I will uh, flip the camera back up. Oh, thank you so much, Rose. Thank you, Rose. Thanks, Robin. I'm glad you all liked my project today. All right, let me just cover up the camera. I'm going to flip back up so that I can... Um, Whoops, so that I can just finish chatting with you face to face. So I always like to do that. I think that's the polite thing to do is say goodbye face to face. <laughs> All right, let's flip those cameras. Oh, I might need to go up a bit higher. Yep, there we go. Get, get everything all in its place. See if my light behaves itself today. 
going to stay there. Oh, no. Every time. Every time I readjust it. Stay. Okay. Got it. <laughs> Every time when I do a Facebook Live, I readjust that light and it doesn't stay. But there we go. Let's readjust that one. Okay. So there's my beautiful card. There's a closer look at it if you um, wanted a closer up look at it. Isn't that beautiful? And you've got all those layers happening in there, all that beautiful distressing. Just really, really pretty. Love that. So it's our little, our little, ro no, this one was peachy and this one is rosy. <laughs> our two little budgies. So there you go. So if there's no questions, just having a look in the comments over here on my computer. Doesn't look like anybody has any questions today. So all good. So again, let me pop up that link for you for my class in case you missed it um, earlier. Just do a little copy of the, the link over there and a little paste. There we go. So Vintage Pretty Birds class. As I said, this card that we've made today is not from the class. This is an additional project. Um, but there's five beautiful projects in the Vintage Pretty Birds class. So if you haven't already done the class, then feel free to subscribe. Uh, sorry, feel free to register uh, for my class this time around so that you don't miss out. But uh, the projects are gorgeous. And the PDF is only $22. And then if you would like to add on the products um, for the class, you can as well, but that is optional. Um, so yeah, so check that out, read the details. And if you would like to then complete the registration form. And I look forward to you joining us for the class. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today. I will be back again next Monday uh, afternoon at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. So I look forward to seeing you then for some more fun crafting. So have a great weekend, everybody. Um, today is, I didn't say, did I? Today is Thursday. No, today is, what day is it? Yeah, Thursday, the 23rd. See, I've been away. I've gotten lost. I've lost track of all time. <laughs> literally, literally lost track. Um, Thursday, 23rd of March, 2023. Um, so, Thank you so much for being here and I hope you have a great crafty weekend. I'll see you all soon. Happy crafting. Bye.